after we have established that there is a statistical association in the population, the next step in research is typically causal inference. So we want to say that there is actually a variable x that causes a variable y instead of a mere statistical association. Let's go back to our example of the Talos LMA 500 list and the difference between men and women led companies. And let's assume now that uh, we want to make the claim that naming a woman as a CEO causes profitability to increase. So we can attribute this profitability difference to the women CEOs. Now, why would this kind of causal claims be important? There are two reasons. First of all, causal claims allow us to make policy recommendations. For example, if we can make a valid causal claim, then we can make claims that we should increase the, the women, women are uh, CEOs. So we should have more women CEOs. We can make that kind of recommendations. Another important uh, reason for making causal claims is that if we don't make a causal claim, then someone else will interpret our results causally. So uh, when this difference was published originally in 2005, there were many discussions in online on various newspapers and whether we should, based on this result, nominate more women as CEOs. Even, let's take another example. There's a report. This is uh, that women-led companies are more profitable. It's not uh, a unique observation to this particular study. Here's a report about, uh, by McKinsey. They show that there's a difference between men and women-led companies. So women-led companies are more profitable. And uh, then they say that while this profitability difference uh, doesn't uh, allow us to make a causal claim, they nevertheless think that there should be a policy recommendation that we have more women on boards or as CEOs. So what do you make of that? When someone reads that kind of claim that they, we can't make causal claim, but nevertheless we think there, there, there could be a, it could be a good thing to have more women leading companies. Of course, people will interpret that in order to improve your financial performance, nominate a woman to a CEO position. So people will make causal interpretations of your data. So you have to uh, either make the interpretation yourself to guarantee that it's valid, or you have to explicitly caution that it's not a causal relationship and you should refrain from making any policy implications like the McKinsey people did. So how do we uh, make a causal claim then? We have identified that there is a, there is a difference of 4.7 percentage point. And let's say that we have some way identifying that that can be by chance only. So there is a consistent association that women-led companies are more profitable than men-led companies. How do we know that it's a causal effect? We have to ask the question of why is there a difference? We need different explanations to rule out, different theories to rule out alternate explanations. There is a reason for the correlation in the data. We just have to un have to discover what is the reason. So is it the reason because women-led companies are more profitable than because of the CEO gender or is there some other reason that certain companies tend to be led by women and certain companies tend to be more profitable. To do that we need a theory. So the theory was uh, a set of, uh, of connected propositions or claims that are explain what happens, how, when, and why. So the important part in this example is that why are the return on assets between the men and women-led companies different? We need to have that why question. And a big part of doing quantitative research is to, to think what kind of rival or alternative explanations we have for our data. We have, for example, these explanations. We could say that our Women as a CEO causes firm performance, the first, ex first explanation, but it's not a direct effect. Rather, it's that uh, women facilitate top management team work and better top management team work lead to firm performance. Or it could be that smaller companies are more profitable and smaller companies are more likely to hire women. That would be an example of a spurious relationship. Or certain industries are more profitable certain industries are more likely to hire women. For example, if we look at return on assets, mining industry, they have large assets, 
So the return on assets in that industry is it's pretty uh, pretty low compared to the in to mean of all industries. Then uh, mining companies are more likely to be run by men than women. So that would be uh, a reason to suspect that there's a spurious correlation. Or it could be a reverse causation. So we could say that uh, because a company is profitable, they can afford to hire a woman. Or it could be that the CEO gender, the, the women are better CEOs and that influences company performance. Why this kind of argument would make sense is because women are still discriminated against in uh, CEO decisions. Only 22 out of 500 companies were led by a woman. That means that the, the, the last woman or the worst woman who gets to be a CEO in that sample is likely to be a lot better CEO than the last man because there are so many more men in, in the sample. So that would be uh, that it's not actually that the women are better uh, or there's something about being a woman that causes the company to be uh, better, but it's, it's a selection effect. So that's also a plausible alternative explanation. Then we need to consider which ones of these are the most relevant. So because we need to collect additional data, we need to have the variable for the, the CEO gender and we need to have the variable for the profitability and then what else? We need to collect data to rule out these alternative explanations and we would at least need uh, the industries because that's easy to get. We would need the company sizes that's easy to get as well. These are uh, top management team performance that's more difficult to get skills more difficult to get. So it's, it's a trade-off of what is easily available and what we actually need. Then we start ruling out these alternative explanations. So we have to uh, consider now three conditions for causality and uh, we can make a causal claim by showing that there's a statistical association between the cause x and the effect y. That's the first step. The association may not be a correlation. It could be some other kind of association, but there must be an association. If cause and effect don't depend on one another, we can't make a causal claim. Then we would have to show that there's a direction of influence so that uh, the, the x, the cause always comes before the y, the effect, and not the other way around. And then we have elimination of rival explanations. So how do we rule out the possibility of this correlation being an industry effect that influences the CEO selection uh, decisions and also influences profitability. How do we know that it's not a firm size effect? There's a very simple strategy for ruling out the direction and that is uh, we just measure the cause before the effect. If we measure the CEO gender now and profitability the next year it's implausible to say that profitability in the future causes it cause the company to choose uh, a women CEO now. Of course there could be some profitability expectations that influence that but that's a different thing. So we measure the cause before the effect. Elimination of the rival explanation is the hard part. We have two empirical strategies for that and one is randomized assignment and uh, do an experiment. In this case we would take the 500 companies randomly assign a randomly chosen Finnish man to half of the companies randomly assign a randomly chosen Finnish women to another half of the companies see which half is more profitable two years from now. That's of course in, in, impractical to do but that's that's the experimental way. We manipulate the independent variable and then we observe the dependent variable after a delay. In practice in business research we do uh, statistical modeling or controlling for alternative explanations. We say that the company profitability is a function of uh, CO gender plus some other things that could correlate with CO gender and then we test which one of those is the strongest predictor of performance taking the other plausible explanations into consideration.